This is a public web page. It contains a deployed machine learning model. This is the data I want to use for predictions. This is how it works. Click, get your data, drag and drop, download, and here are our predictions. All this runs online in the cloud, not on my local machine. It's totally free and takes minutes to set up. And there's going to be no containerization, no cloud services set up, just pure Python, GitHub, and a few clicks of a mouse. Let's dive in. Assume we've trained the machine learning model. For this example, I've trained one on the Iris dataset and saved it as a joblib file. Here I have an empty folder containing this one file. To reproduce this joblib file, you can use the following code. Now, how would we normally predict with this model on new data? We just import the model along with the required Python packages, load our data, predict, and then save our predictions. And here you can see the probabilities of the three classes because this is a multi-class classification problem. Now, suppose we have a customer who does not know how to code and wants a no-code user interface to inference the model, and it needs to be live 24-7, or you just want to share this with the community. We can do all of that using the single Python library, Streamlit, and the corresponding free web hosting service it provides. Let's create a new Python file and we'll call it app.py. It will contain code for our future web application. Here are the required imports, of course, Streamlit, Pandas for data wrangling, joblib to import the save model, and random forest classifier because this is what we have used to train our model. Make sure that you use the same model framework version which you have used to train your model. You have to specify this in the requirements file and it has to be in this folder. I've got this one right here and it contains the four libraries that we need and scikit-learn is with a specified version the same version that I've used to train the model on my local machine. Now let's make a title for our web page st.title and let's call it iris 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 model inference great thing about streamlit that it lets you assess the development process in real time just open terminal make sure you're in the same directory with your app.py file and run streamlit run app.py it will automatically open the default browser and show you the result on the local host page notice how it rendered the text in large bold font and that is because you've used the streamlit title method and there are many other methods which will conveniently render your inputs without you having to go into font weights and size definitions, precise locations of those titles on your web page, and so forth. It's an acceptable trade-off between high customization and development speed. Now, if you change anything in your source code, uh, for instance, if you add a subheader and save, notice how you get this rerun button. Click that, it will automatically update your web application. Let's delete this. Now let's make it look nicer. We'll add a sidebar. Syntax is very simple. With st sidebar, st write data requirements. Streamlit write is a general purpose method that you can use to write any information on your web app. And I think that a header would be more appropriate here. Let's change this to header, save, rerun. You see how quick you can develop with Streamlit and see your progress in real time. Okay, now I want to add a caption here as well. So st.caption. Here's the text that I want to put in this caption. This is the way it's going to look like. And the actual data set requirements will go into a drop-down window. And I'm using different methods here just to showcase the Streamlit capabilities. But for all intents and purposes, if the design doesn't matter to you, you could have just used the streamlit.write method for all the text. The drop-down menu in Streamlit is called expander with st.expander data format and I want to add four bullet points in here like this let's see how it's gonna look like all right data format and these are the requirements let's also add a divider and a developer name if you want to go all in and make it look perfect you can actually incorporate HTML and CSS together with Streamlit let's say we want to center this caption here the appropriate HTML magic is going to look like this. So P style text align center, then the actual text you want to align and then P again. To make it work with Streamlit, you have to pass an additional argument. Unsafe allow HTML equals true. All right, let's rerun and we have it centered. You can play with the design all you want, but the purpose of this application is prediction of new data. So let's just do that. We'll create a button, let's get started. And when you press it, you can upload your new data set. ST has a file uploader method that can handle this. All right, let's test it. Got this button here, let's get started. And you can drag and drop or you can browse files. Let's browse files, test data, upload. As you can see, when we've clicked upload, everything disappears. 
and that is because Streamlit has a session state abstraction where you can define to remember different states of your web application, in this case the state of the button being clicked. First thing that we need to do is to add a clicked state to the Streamlit session state and we'll assign it to false because when you enter the page for the first time before you click this button it is not clicked. Then we need to define a function to change it to true and finally we'll create a let's get started button with an on click argument passing there a function which we have just defined so that when clicked this function will change the session state for this button and keep the subsequent page section open. And instead of this code right here, this is how we proceed with this button. So if the session state clicked object that we have just created in the dictionary will have an argument true, then we can upload our file. Now let's save and have a look. Let's get started. Browse files, upload, and there you have it. Now all we have to do is load our data to a pandas data frame, load the model and predict if uploaded file is not none the uploaded file object which we have just created here is essentially just a path to the file which means now we can use the default pandas read csv method and pass that path here i think it's a good idea to print a snippet of your data to your web application so that the user can make sure that they have uploaded the correct data set we're going to use the general purpose st.write method okay looks good now let's upload our model the model file has to be in this folder. Now we can load it with joblib and use it for predictions. The next thing is to convert our predictions into a data frame and give it the appropriate column names. And we will also print out the head of our predictions to the web interface. Perfect. The last thing we want to do is to save the predictions onto our local machine. We'll need to convert the predictions data frame to csv format we'll use the pandas to csv method without saving it to disk instead we'll store the csv data frame in a python variable we're gonna need a download button and streamlit has a method called download button there are a few required arguments first we're gonna pass our prediction data frame the name of the downloaded file the type of file that is being downloaded and a key rerun we'll start from the beginning let's get started and we've got an error here. We should have indented this a little bit to the right because these actions happen only if uploaded file is not none. And uh, let's save and try again. We can see the download prediction button, click download, and here are our predictions in the download folder. Coding part is done. Now we need to deploy the model to the cloud so that anyone in the world can use it. You've got a deploy button here in the corner. Click it and you get two options, Streamlit Community Cloud and Custom Deployment. First option is totally free. It automates cloud resources provisioning, all the setup that you would normally do with Docker and other services. All these automation tools built into this method make the deployment process much easier. If you want to share this model with someone quickly and you're not dealing with sensitive customer data, then this is the option to choose. In this case, URL for this app is going to end with streamly.app. Second option is deployment to any other cloud or maybe an internal corporate server. Use this if you don't want to depend on some community cloud or if the data is private. Here you'll need Docker to containerize it, create an API and other good stuff. I've explained this part in detail in that video. We'll go with the first option and for this you're gonna have to push this code into a GitHub repo. Let's do this quickly, create a new repository. The name is going to be deploy model streamlit and click create repository. Now let's go to the folder with our application. This folder has to contain the app.py file that we've just created, the model that we're using to make predictions and the requirements file. And we forgot about the readme. Always include readme into any repository. So let's quickly create this. It's going to contain the title here, but usually you should explain what's happening in this repository. All right, now with terminal while being inside the folder with all these files, the first command is git init and notice how this changed to master. This means that we have initiated repository on the local machine and we have five untracked files. You can see, well, four and maybe there is a hidden file. Let's look at the git status. All right, we've got five untracked changes in this repository and this is a hidden file from Apple. Mac OS places it inside every folder. So let's create a git ignore file so that this hidden file would not be uploaded to the remote repository. So git ignore with a dot and the file that we want to ignore. If we check the git status again, we've got 
Again, five files only without this DS store and with git ignore. Okay, very good. The next command is git add full stop like this so that these new changes will be added to your future commit. Git commit, let's add a message in it repo upload files okay and before we push this to the remote repository we need to connect it to the remote repository the one that we have just created so it's right here on github this is the command all right now git push okay so uh, we've made a small mistake and it tells us how to correct it git push setup stream origin master let's just copy and paste it and all our changes have been pushed to the remote repository. Let's have a look. Just go to GitHub and refresh this page. And here you've got all this code and your readme. Now let's run our application locally once again. Just to get that deploy button. Let's check if everything is all right. Okay, works like a charm. Now deploy, Streamlit Community Cloud, deploy now. Here we can add a custom name or URL for this application. Let's say Iris model. This domain is already taken. Let's say Iris model 2024 and click deploy. It's going to take a few minutes and after that your application is either going to be live on the internet or there's going to be an error which is very common and you'll have a neat console on the right showing you the stack trace of the error so you can go back into your code, fix it and then push the code back into, the, into your repository once again. And one minor thing we've missed here is the connection of your Streamlit account to your GitHub account. But it's very straightforward. Once you press that deploy now button for the first time, the interface is going to guide you through everything very quickly. And we can see that our model is live on the internet. Check out the URL Iris model 2024 streamlit.app. So anyone can access this model and predict with it. I'm going to link this repository in the description and I'm going to also throw in the sample test data there so you can test it out. And by the way, this is a great idea for one of the portfolio projects you might want to share within your CV or with some recruiter because this framework does not only has to be used with machine learning models. You can deploy any kind of app, some automation code or maybe some visualization, you name it. This was easy, wasn't it? So see you on the next video.